Ocklers, we're back. Ecotech Rebuild Part 4. Getting into the goodies. Alright everybody, so last time we were on this we uh, threw the balance shaft deletes in here. Those suckers are buried in there. Uh, we got to do a little bit of a clean up on the block and a clean up on the uh, block to head surface under here. Holes are marked. Just want to do a little bit better of a clean up on the whole uh, mating surface before we go ahead and slap the pistons and rods in and prep it for the head and head gasket and head studs and all the goodies but like i previewed we're on to the goodies today throwing in the eagle h connecting rods arp goodies arp bolts throwing in the wiseco's wiseco forge piston kit all four cylinders with the rings and these things are BEA beautiful. Yeah, those are some units. So, that's the job today. We're going to put these together with these, throw some rings on, and we'll see if we can't uh, slap them into the bottom end today. See where we get to, but uh, let's get into it. Okay, so as you can see, Piston, kind of showed you guys that before. These are the Eagle H forged rods. Super, super heavy duty feeling. I think we're going to have no issues with these things. ARP hardware in the top. Inside the piston we got wrist pins and the retainer C-clips. So. We're going to make all this one, <clears throat> and then we'll go along and do the second, third, fourth ones, along with the pistons. Just want to do a quick overview of these. I don't know if you guys noticed, cylinder four, cylinder three, cylinder two, this is cylinder one. So the tuner and I actually set the rings up for each hole in the bottom end. That's why these are labeled, and so is the block. So you have to set the piston ring gap as per your set up whatever you're doing supercharged turbocharged and a nitrous different specifications through uh wiseco for different setups so we went ahead and gap these two nice little setup for boost lots of boost and we're gonna see if it runs let's see if it works and we're gonna see if it makes all the boost we want but i just wanted to go over that with you guys so we already got the rings gapped i'll uh i might do a quick overview on how to do that and then also if you look here these pistons are all balanced weighted and balanced the same as well as the rods so everything should be pretty well balanced in the bottom end rotating assembly and we shouldn't have any problem to dot for the facing forward part of the piston and uh yeah anyway let's get into it okay so all parts are laid out this is the first one i've ever assembled this is gonna be the first one you guys are gonna see assembled on this channel anyway so first things first grab a halfway decent clean microfiber Remember, we're not working on uh, hyper super car GTRs and shit, so we're not doing this in a sealed by environment with all that crazy, uh, crazy shit they do. Okay, so I'll give everything a wipe down. I already give the piston a wipe down. Uh, figure out which orientation is forward and backwards. Like I said, the dot, it actually says FWD for forward. So that'll be the front of the motor. So this means this side is the front of the motor facing this way so I'm also gonna go ahead and I make the Eagle rods the actual Eagle logo symbol there I don't know if you can see it whatever so that's what we're gonna make facing the front of the engine as well part number on the back that'll be the back so she's actually gonna go in here just about like that right we're gonna throw our pin in and then we're gonna throw our snap rings in to lock it all together Going through this one, first one with you guys, just so you see what, what I'm doing here. I'm explaining it. And then the next couple, I'm probably just going to time lapse us. We'll fire through it. So, anyway, let's uh, let's go ahead and open this up. 
feels like it's got a little bit of uh, oil on it from the factory. I'm still going to go ahead and use some of this Permatex pre-assembly lube, ultra slick. I'm just going to dab a little bit of, little dabble do you on there. Right, this stuff is crazy, crazy slick. Obviously you want super clean hands before touching any of this stuff. Like I said, we're not sealed environment, we're not building 3,000 horsepower race motors, but we're gonna try to make as much power as we can out of this sucker. So, make sure she's all clean. Go ahead, get your orientation right, eagle forward. Gonna lay this in here. And this takes a little bit of fan dangling here, a little bit of wiggling. Just feel it slowly but surely start to go through. I like just rotating the piston and the connecting rod like that just to get that little bit of flow, a little bit of smooth action there. Now look at us. We are hooked up. So, I'm going to lay that down, wipe the fingers off there, and we're going to bust out the snap rings. These things are just uh, literally that, simple snap rings. There's no snap ring holes or nothing, so we should be able to just pop them in there with our fingers. Like I said, I've never done this, so we're gonna see. Double check again, eagle forward, forward, yep, so we're good there. Let's go ahead and roll this sucker over. Right in here, you see that little groove. That's the groove where we gotta put the snap rings, so. Let's get into this. Okay, so I'm gonna take the snap ring here. Okay, I don't know if we're gonna be able to do this by hand. Okay, so we're obviously gonna have to do something about getting those fuckers in there. Cause that there's a lot of force on those guys. So, let me figure something out and I'll get back to you. Okay, so, we got the first one in there. Very tight. You can see my assortment of tools here used. It was mainly a little bit of this guy and a little bit of this. You gotta really try to use your thumbs because you don't want to gouge up anything too bad. But one is in there. So now, the wrist pin will actually sit against that and should rotate freely. I'm gonna roll it over here and we gotta do the second one. Same thing, same. So I'm gonna try to do them down or maybe on a little bit of an angle. And uh, first thing you get one ridge in here and you just gotta try to squeeze, squeeze this edge and push the middle in at the same time. It's kind of a pain in the ass, but it is what it is. So I'll show you guys, we might just speed this up because I'm gonna be sitting here arguing with it and this is still the first one. I gotta get these things done, so. Anyway, let's look. It's not going how the last one did. Let's uh
Okay, so number one is done. Definitely not the uh, the best install of the circlips. That's what they're called, circlips. But that's my first one. So there's the new assembly for the Ecotech. Wise co forged pistons and an Eagle H rod. A little bit of assembly lube in there to make sure she spins free. And one's done. Three more to go. Let's get these suckers built and ready to go into the motor. Let's go. Okay, well, like I said, three more to go. So I'm gonna put you all on time lapse. Let's get into this, get it done. So we got four slugs sitting there waiting to go into the motor. Let's go. Alrighty then, that is it. One, two, three, four. Pistons and connecting rods all put together, assembled, ready to go into the block. The only thing we gotta do still is install the piston rings, but we're gonna wait on those until the next episode. I wanna get the mating surface of the block cleaned and make sure it is 100% ready to accept these slugs. So, I uh, hope you guys installed part four of the Ecotech build. Uh, we basically just slapped the connecting rods and the pistons together, showed you guys how to install the circlips, albeit a little bit ghetto, but I've never done them before, and everybody said you could do them with your thumbs. There's no way, not unless you got Hulk thumbs or something. Anyway, the only tools I, need, I needed for this install were the needle nose, uh, be very gentle if you're gonna use those, and a flat-headed rubber bottom screwdriver. So I used the bottom end to kind of tap the ring in when it wasn't fully in, the circlip, sorry. And then uh, just the tip of it, just to force it down into its groove, and we're good. So, like I said, hope you guys are enjoying the forge build. These things are rocking and ready to go. That's, uh, that's a nice unit there. Hopefully we don't send these out the side of the block like I've been doing with the factory ones. We've been kind of windowing stuff and the whole reason we're doing this is to get rid of that. Plus, hopefully we can run just a little more boost. I guess we'll see how it goes. But anyway, check back in for part five. This is part four. Check back in for part five. We'll be throwing these things in and uh, prepping it for ahead. So hope you guys enjoyed. Anyway, we'll see you on the next one.